Okay, in this presentation what we're going to do is looking at how to make box plots. So just a quick introduction to making box plots with ggplot2. So importantly, you should have a sense of what a, GG, or what a box plot is before you really look at this video, how to interpret it. It's a sort of gives you a sense of the dispersion of the variable. And it works best really when you have a group, you're comparing multiple groups. So we're going to see that later on. So the median, the first and third quartiles, the extremes, the maximum and minimum, and outliers, okay. So the extremes is like the maximum, not considered an outlier. That there's a there's a lot to it anyway. Box plots. So what I'm going to do is uh, sort of uh, what we're going to do here is look at a very sort of simplistic setup. Uh, like so, essentially what we're going to do here is we have a grouping variable, okay, and a numeric variable. Now this is where ggplot may sort of differ from pen and paper calculations that you might have seen in undergraduate statistics. It is in computers, in the when you're data visualization, you probably would use uh, box plots over multiple groups. So the grouping structure is important for practical purposes. Okay, when you're doing it out by pen and paper, you might only be asked to draw one box plot. It doesn't really work like that in the real world. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is uh, we're going to pick out a data set called empty cars and I just let's have a look at the empty cars just pick out the last few variables or the last few cases okay so what I'm going to do here is pick out let's say miles per gallon and cylinder uh, s or sorry uh, c y l cylinder the first two variables okay now just to give you a sort of bit of clarity cylinder is c y l is number of cylinders Okay, so actually that is a numeric variable also. Okay, but I'm going to just convert it into, um, it's a numeric variable. What I'm going to do is convert it into a factor. Okay, so I'm just going to bit work on the basis of factor sil. So I'm just going to turn it into a categorical variable. Okay, uh, sorry, I meant to uh, uh, comment that out but essentially that's what I'm going to work on so I'm just going to make a slight conversion of what I have there because it is in as it is stated in that data set it is actually a numeric variable and rightly so because it in the first instance it is a numeric variable so anyway let's get set up so BP for box plot okay sorry let's just start off GG plot to uh, GG plot the data equals MT cars okay and the aesthetics are the variables we're going to be working with so x equals factor cylinder okay and y equals miles per gallon yeah and th that's how we got set up so far now again i've described this as a sort of blank canvas in the previous video and just to sort of uh, say something similar here that it, that's all we have done here set up a very blank canvas it's like got some canvas and nailed some wood together and stretched some canvas over to it over it. so nothing really to, uh, much to see yet what I'm going to do there is save that as an object called BP BP for box plot okay and what we can do here is BP uh, geom underscore box plot go let's see how that looks I have to fish it out here uh, the reason I'm using b a cylinder or sorry a base R is just because it's actually slightly easier to read what I'm doing okay there we go that is a set of box plots comparing the miles per gallon between the very the three different types of car four cylinder six cylinder eight cylinder so what I could tell you here is that first off these little dots they're outliers okay and if the the point here at the bottom that's the minimum value and the point at the top is the maximum value so if you just look over look over here the, the maximum value corresponds to about 23 or something like that the minimum corresponds to about 18 the line through the middle is the median line so essentially uh, that's the sort of like half of the miles per gallon for each category of car is above and below that line okay and the 
this is the the box is sort of bound by Q1 and Q3, the first and third quartile. So 25% of the data is less than this. 75% is less than this. Would that that mean that 50% of the data points are in this number line here? Probably best uh, trying to find that out another time. Okay, so that is how to do box plots. Now, what I do could do there is you can actually put in a title and stuff like that. So I'm just going to do that. You can sort of just like I did with a couple of other videos, uh, my box plot. Uh, we can also do a couple of other things. Chord flip. Uh, GG title box plot. Oops, don't need an underscore there. Uh, let's just sorry go back there again. I just did not need to do that. Underscore there. Let's see how that looks. Essentially, what I'm getting at is that you can now sort of enhance your plot on an ongoing basis. Uh, what I've done there is I've just added in a title, my box plot up at the top, and chord flip is actually just sort of flip it on its side. That's all it does. Okay, so have it sort of horizontally orientated. Okay, now there's loads of other things you can do, uh, if, like for add a legend and so on and color it in. I'm going to sort of save that for other videos because all these other enhancements are not just specific to box plots. Okay. Okay, so that's how to make a quick box plot with ggplot.